Meet Bebop. Bebop has been around for a long time and remains mostly unchanged, but that doesn't make it any less of a powerful tool to have in your computer science curriculum toolkit. Bebop does not require a device to program and has only seven buttons. The X button clears the Bebop's memory. Bebop's memory can hold 40 commands at a time. Every time you start a new program, you need to press the X button first to make sure the memory is clear. Bebop can move in only two directions. It can move forward six inches and it can move backward six inches. There are two turn buttons. This button will turn Bebop to the left. Note that Bebot does not change locations when it turns, it simply rotates. It's important for students to understand this. Bebot can also turn right. The final action that Bebot can do is to pause for one second. To start the program, push go. In addition to moving, Bebot can interact in a few other ways. The eyes light up and Bebot can make sounds. The new C and C Bebot can recognize when other Bebots pass by and can be programmed to play user recorded sounds. The eye lights help students program since they light up every time a button is pressed. When programming, teach students to wait for the eyes to light up after each button press. By looking for the eyes to light up, they have to slow down a bit and attend to precision. The eyes also help you charge the bot correctly. Newer Bebot's eyes will flash red when they need to be charged. When connected to power, both eyes will turn red when the Bebot is charging and green when fully charged. On older bots, one eye will light up green, then go off when fully charged. If the eyes do not light up when connected to power, make sure the bot is turned off and try again. To charge Bebot, connect the USB cord to the charging plug or place the Bebot on the charging dock. It can be difficult for kids to identify the power switch and most do not know that zero is off and one is on, although this can be a fun excuse to teach them basic binary code. I like to use a permanent marker to color the area around the switch. If you have colorblind students, you may want to color only one side. The speaker is located on the underside of the Bebot. You can turn the sound on and off with this switch. If you have a CNC Bebot, you can also turn the sensor on and off. If you're going to start young students on a mat instead of just with free play, I would suggest the number line. In this example, I'm going to put the Bebot on the number 5 and add two more. When going forward one more space, students will often forget to clear the program. If you add a forward command and hit go, Bebot will move forward three spaces. To program the sequence correctly, put the bat back at the starting position. Program it to move forward two spaces and hit go. Then clear the memory and create a new program with only one forward command. Bebot can also move backwards on the number line. Using Bebot with a number line can help with one-to-one -one correspondence in addition to helping teach numbers, counting on, adding, and subtracting. Understanding how the Bebot will turn is one of the biggest challenges for students. It can be hard for them to think from the bot's point of view. By programming the bot step-by-step, -step, you can help them see how the bot will move and turn. If the bot is going to move from here to the exit sign, it can start by moving forward one time. Add the forward command and hit go. From here, it is easier to see which way the bot needs to turn. Push the turn right button. Now move the bot back to the start and hit go. The robot will now do both commands since we didn't clear the memory. Finally, the bot needs to move forward three times. Add these commands and put the bot back at the beginning before pressing go. If you have programming cards, you can also use these to help the students write their code. It helps to put the move forward card slightly over the line to indicate movement and keep the turn cards completely within the squares. Once all of the cards have been laid out, I have the students stack them starting with the last card first. That way, when they line them up starting with the card on top of the stack, their program will be in the correct sequence. Once they have all of their cards in order, the students can enter their program and see if they are correct. Bebot will pause briefly after each command is performed. It can help to have students point to the cards or their written code while the program is running. That way, they can identify where the error occurs in their code. This will prevent them from completely erasing their code and starting over. They should only make one change at a time, check to see if that change fixed the error, and then proceed. If you would like to learn more about me and how I can help you teach your students how to code, please visit my website at BetsyMintonTech.com.